Hello my friends and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood where we have just won ourselves a bridge via trickery. Yeah, hey, whatever works, right? Yeah, we gotta start somewhere. So, let us put on that ring, although for some dumb reason, all the darn time, rings never want to put themselves in the right slot. It, regardless of whether it's the top or the bottom slot, it just like picks one and it's always the wrong darn one. Every time. Okay. So now, while they take care of, you know, searching for stragglers on the inside, we're gonna search for them on the outside. Works for me. Okay, we're gonna go to this one first. You know, that fate was up when I was just here, like, not even an hour ago. Well, you just could keep running! Like, if there's only two of you, you can just run. I love when your Asuna gets interrupted by the Paralyze. Ugh. Sorry, nothing personal. Well, you seem to be made of a little bit more sterner stuff than your other comrades were. Sorry it had to come to this. So our meeting place is not quite where I thought it was, but right in between the two. So I guess it wouldn't have mattered which one I did first. I was thinking it was up by the house there, so. Trying to take the shortest route, but... Seems my memory of the map is not quite what I thought it was. Well, for now, yeah. Okay. So hopefully these guys will have the bridge fully secured. Dang it, you guys are like two feet shorter than I am. 
How are you getting here faster than I am? So I guess we just wait. So uh, none of you get nothing anything new. Okay. Naturally five minutes is all the time we need before one of them pops out and be like, Hey, everything's okay. Oh, right on schedule. Oh, nice of her to tell us this. Okay, but do you know the way? Or do we suddenly conveniently have a map only when it's convenient for the plot to tell us we have said map? Alright, so now we actually have free reign to cross this bridge. Which will give us access to the southeastern part of the map that we have been missing this entire time. And do I have the compass on this hotbar? I want to say there might be an aether current somewhere nearby. If I can't find it easily, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it for the time being. I just, I just had vague memories of something on the bridge. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, just one stinking second. Those people aren't who I think they are, are they? As if you're talking about Laurentius and Yu Yuhasa, I have a score to settle with the both of them. Even if, you know, the Warrior of Light doesn't quite know that, but I do. I believe that's the first mention of them, this entire expansion so far. We never learned of their fate after what happened at Belsar's Wall. Let's see if I can find this current real quick. Alright, enough of that little detour. As I have the local wildlife on my back, but... I'll run away soon enough. I have to say I like how these antlions actually will hide burrowed underneath the ground. And even though you can see their nameplate, they don't come out until you get near their territory. See? I I, that's a nice touch. I like that. Okay. Yeah, we gotta stand to stay on guard. Hello. 
Nice little tunnel here through there. And they even have railings. How sweet. Yeah, first things first. Since it's right here, we're attuning to this darn aetherite. There we go. So now we can much more, e even though we can always pass through the, the bridge on foot anytime we would like, now we have, well, better free access to the rest of the map, thankfully. Ah, you've come. Welcome, friends, to my village. My home. How fair your people? Good, all things considered. Better than the Ananta at any rate. They've sent an emissary. I'll take you to her. Um, okay. Kind of seems awkward to- We're here to help. Will you tell us what happened? You know, now formally really reintroduce us to the Ananta. Like, we, we've seen them very, very briefly in Ralga's Reach, where, you know, Lise did point them out point them out to us, and we've seen them in backgrounds and cutscenes and, and, and whatnot, along with the Resistance. And we did handle one quest for uh, one of them who was who had lost her trainees and stuff like that, but now we're actually gonna get more of a formal introduction. And honestly, this is kind of out of left field at this point. Aye, it began with a quarrel between the Imperials and the Kaliana. The Kaliana are another Ananta tribe, the strongest and the most influential. Unlike the Vera, they want no part of our troubles. They swore fealty to the Empire, and were content to remain within their borders. Just so, the Kaliana forsook their pride and the fight, and yielded to Garlemald long ago. But then a new commander was sent to hold the Black Bridge. She demanded the Kaliana surrender a hostage, this butcher. Fort Dola. It doesn't make sense, though. The Vera are the ones working with the Resistance. Why would she threaten the Kaliana? Because she is ignorant like all Imperials, she knows not the difference between Kaliana and Vera, nor does she care to learn. I see. All Fadola knew for sure was that the Resistance would come from the West. She reasoned, therefore, that if the Ananta on the East Bank turned their coats, she would be trapped. I take it the Kaliana had no choice but to oblige her. No, they did not. The Imperials left with the Kaliana Broodmother's own daughter, Anamika. Long days and nights, she looked out on the Black Bridge, weeping for her child. Until you came. The Broodmother knew at once which way the winds would blow. She and her warriors met with the fleeing Imperials in the road and demanded that her daughter be returned. Bad idea. Fordola's not the kind to take threats lying down. You know her well. The Butcher turned her blade to Anamika and bade the Kaliana move aside. But the brood mother would not yield. I know where this is going. Yeah. The Kaliana surrounded the Imperials, one of whom, whether out of fear or stupidity, cut the child down. 
There was naught that could be done. What madness. The true madness was yet to come. For in her despair, the Kaliana broodmother cried out for her daughter to be restored to life. She beseeched Sri Lakshmi's intercession. She summoned a primal then and there? That she did, if only for an instant. Bereft of courage and honor, the broodmother sought solace in her faith. The Imperials fled in terror at the sight of the Goddess, abandoning these lands to the Ananta. Now the Kalyana bid us make pilgrimage to pay proper respects. Yet though we, Vera, revere Sri Lakshmi as the holiest of the holy, we will not prostrate ourselves before her. And so you turn to us? I, all who have fought with the Resistance have heard tell of the warrior, the Icon Slayer. I love how we're like, what? <laughs> I believe we have heard enough. Inconvenient though the timing may be, if a primal has indeed been summoned, we can scarce afford to ignore it. We must needs discuss how best to resolve this situation. Don't know if I want that coat. <laughs> of course, it doesn't show me. I'm gonna pass on it for now. Because I want to say I have a better coat from Doma Castle. So I'm just gonna have to take the chance there. But what I find interesting about that whole story is that the Kaliana have sworn fealty to the Empire. And as a result, you would think the Empire would, to some extent, know the difference between the two tribes, because one of them should be your allies. I think it would have made more sense if the Kaliana just stayed out of the whole thing just entirely. Like, obviously the Vera, you know, have chosen to side the resistance, but if the Kaliana were, you know, just chose to stay neutral in the entire conflict and then just the Empire largely left them alone because, you know, they, they weren't a threat or didn't have anything that they, they needed, then I could understand an accidental miscommunication happening where the Empire would confuse the two. But when one of them is your active ally of sorts, or at least sworn fealty to you, that's a terrible, horrible mistake to make. And it's also, you know, mostly made clear that it wasn't just a mistake for Dola herself and only her made that um, the Vera here, who has no name for some reason, has seemed to imply that none of the Imperials can tell the damn difference. And that is, that is a huge blunder on the part of the Imperials. Alright, so we're taking this upon ourselves to educate ourselves about the primal, and while I can kind of respect this, um, partially on the grounds that 
One of the things that really annoyed me about the Azim step was that we spend way too much time learning about basically the various tribes religious and spiritual beliefs and that same courtesy is not bestowed upon of other places which like as much as I don't I'm not really fond of that kind of narrative I I get it and it just seemed odd that you know they they spare all that to the Azim step but not elsewhere and to hear even though the end result is the same I gotta take the primal down but it not only helps to know what we're up against, like, you know, like, basically what kind of powers do the primal use, you know, basically just give us something to work with so we're not going in completely blind. But as a result of this, we also are extending our hands to learning about someone else's personal belief system to make it a little bit more fair and spread out and not just give this treatment to the Zela tribes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Well, we should probably point this out to them. So, I, I do rather kind of like this, this, this aspect of it. A lot of people have accused this, this part of the plot with Lakshmi just showing up out of nowhere is almost, you know, like comparative to, you know, like a wild Pokemon appearance kind of thing. And in terms of segueing into the plot, I can pretty much agree on that. But I do like some of the aspects they present as, as part of this. Uh, partially not only what I just said, but that I don't want to say this is a first for, you know, the quote-unquote beast tries, but it certainly is the most obvious in, in, it, in its example that even though there are two distinct fashions, factions, they don't really have anything against one another as, as a whole. They, they still, they have differing beliefs, but they see each other otherwise as, as kin. And not only that, but that the Vera here definitely recognize that the summoning of Sri Lakshmi is nothing but a farce and, you know, they're asking us for help to put it down, put it down, not only for, for their sakes, but for the Kalyana sakes as, as well. Like, they're not just in it for, for their own sake. They're, they're in it for all, um, Ananta and such. And I, 
And I really sort of appreciate that, even if this is all going to end up mostly pointless, because as much as I enjoy these, um, that they're giving different points of view and in different plot lines to, you know, the reason these primals are summoning and being summoned and not just rehashing the same tale over and over and over again. Um, at least not when it comes to, to the minute details of things, but it's, it's kind of frustrating in the end because the end result is going to be the same. Regardless of the reason for the primal summoning, we have to put it down. And it is a huge annoyance to me in the story as a whole that for all the Scylum's work and, you know, that dealing with the primals, and especially in my case, is kind of a thing we do, not at any point in the narrative does anyone talk or even do any sort of research or even mention trying to apply any sort of research to what can we do to prevent a primal summoning in the first place. And I don't mean in the sense of, you know, oh, we just got to make friends and make them not hate, you know, the Eorzeans as a whole kind of thing, because that's a whole different battle. But I mean, from a scientific standpoint, is there something we can do to, you know, divert Aether from a primal? Or do we know how the summoning process even happens in the first place? And is there anything we can do to, to sort of interrupt it or anything like that? Like just something anything because this is a problem that just keeps happening and happening and happening and it just gets so boring and repetitive because in the end result as i said it's someone summons primal for x reason start to add sympathy to 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 the equation about why it was summoned and whatnot and you know how you know just putting down the primal won't solve the problem but at the end of the day putting down the primal is part of the problem that we have to solve regardless of it all and it just gets so darn repetitive and redundant all in the end. We know what we have to do in the end. There, There is no, when it comes to the primal themselves, there is no black and white anymore. Like, it's, it's only black and white. There are no shades of gray. Primal summoned, we have to put the primal down. And so the second you hear that a primal has been summoned, you already know what the end conclusion is. You know, and it's, it's just, it's getting very annoying and very old, and it's a, it's a criticism I've had for the game for a long time, and situations like this don't really help matters. Put it into this primal plotline, or even suggest how we're going to deal with the problem long term, even if it doesn't work out, even if someone suggests something and it doesn't work at all, or it backfires horribly. To me, that wouldn't matter, because it would at least show there, there's there been some kind of attempt to circumvent this problem in the long term, even if we can't do anything about it in the short term. Something, anything, doesn't work, backfires horribly, okay, at least it's a foot in the door, and at least it will be someone trying something else. Instead of having our Scion friends just hang out all the damn time until the plot just suddenly needs them, have them do something toward this. Like, even if they're just talking about researching this, that would be a start. But enough for that rant. We're going to have to leave this next part of the quest where, you know, what the inevitable conclusion is. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I shall see you next time.